Okay, guys, you may presently see a video loaded up here. It is indeed one of Chris's, and I'm going to hit play, and we're going to do a bit of an impromptu commentary on this. He doesn't know what it is, but I... it is a game we've mentioned already. Okay? Well, it's one of my NRGs, I can tell straight away, but... Ooh, how can you tell? I can read the tab at the top. <laughs> oh, yes, five to ten minutes of gameplay. No, don't look at that, I'll cover it up with the mouse pointer. Oh, it's one of my new ones then, because I put the. Oh, look at that fancy intro! Yeah, I put the filter on the, on the, yeah. Oh yes, look it's at that! My new Pink intro, Floyd. Pink Floyd, yes. Doom, 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 doom. Hope everyone likes oh. my new intro. Oh, he appears in his intro. Oh, look at that! Who made you this intro? Did you do it? Me, I made it, yeah. Oh, cool! What did you make it in? Oh, I, 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 it's funny because Raz, James. Um, uh, Chris, the other, uh, Chris Hack, I think, yeah, he, they all answered me how I made this. I used a template from an online resource. Yay! It's Go Dizzy Go! Oh dear! Dizzy is becoming mouldy though, he's gone all green. That's the image from the CPC. I like your use of Comic Sans as well there as well. Well done. You should have a round of applause for that. Thank you. See, it's not always an inappropriate font. Yes. Codemasters, absolutely brilliant. I've always liked that purple that Codemasters have used as the background. Yeah, yeah um, so yeah, it, it, it was a template that I, I took off a site, and you can put your pictures into it. So I messed around with that for about an hour, and then I stuck it into um, uh, NHC VideoPad, and then pissed around with it there, changed certain things, changed colours and the scene changes, put words in and stuff. And then put the soundtrack over the top, and then rendered it in Windows Movie Maker, and it, it came out okay. Ah, good old Windows Movie Maker. For those it's of best, us who it's best for rendering, not for editing, but it's really good for rendering. Is it really? I found it is. It seems I've used um, Win, um, Video Pad and um, Vegas seem to take so long to render. Um, I had another one as well, which is ridiculous. It went up. Yeah, here we go. Go, Dizzy, go. Looks quite fun, actually, this game. I remembered this as something like Quick Snacks, but I've no idea what that game is now. It's kind of a mixture between Quick Snacks and Fast Food. Right. Um, it's slightly different. In fact, you can move you can move the maze blocks around. Yeah, and you can also destroy the enemies as well. Dizzy wins! It's part, uh, well I mentioned this in the video, it's part of the ultimate Dizzy collection, or the excellent Dizzy collection, should I say, on the Master System, and it, the officially, it was officially the last Dizzy release before um, the Oliver Twins split from the Codemasters. Ah, right. Oh, apparently the Oliver Twins were at the National Computing Museum in Cambridge last week delivering a talk. I only found about this, found out about this the day after. It's not as if I was going to go to Cambridge to see it anyway. <laughs> but we have different members of Dizzy's family here. Dylan, Daisy. Yeah. Or are they members of Dizzy's family? Are they just yeah, yeah. all the eggs? Yeah, the young folks all in this game. Yeah. Ah, can I ask another question? Yep. Has Dizzy ever actually fought anybody in a boxing match? No. <laughs> but why does he wear boxing gloves? Is it for oh. the same reason that Arnold Rimmer, a young Arnold Rimmer, wears boxing gloves in Red Dwarf? It's interesting you should answer that because I asked Andrew Oliver himself why he wears boxing gloves. Really? In, a, in an interview I did for, T, for Pixel Empire. Oh, cool. And I've what got the, the, the interview is on, is on the Pixel Empire that I did with Andrew Oliver. And um, oh. and one of the questions was, why does Dizzy, Dizzy wear boxing gloves? The simple answer is, is that when they were coding the game, <laughs> they couldn't represent hands correctly with the low res that was available. So what they ended up doing was putting these red gloves on him, and they looked coincidentally like boxing gloves. So they thought, oh, we'll run with that thing. <laughs> it was a complete fluke. Oh, well, it just looks like he's wearing boxing gloves. Oh, we'll just we'll just make it look look like he's wearing boxing gloves, and then and then everyone just embraced that, and egg oh. wearing boxing gloves. <laughs> so it's kind of the same story as Super Mario. Why he has a mustache then? Yeah. Graphical it's, limitations. Yeah, graphical limitations. Yeah, graphical limitations. Um, turns out to be a complete fluke and uh, goes down in folklore. 
Yoke folklore. Hey, hey, hey very good. D I know, cause, cause he is very distinctive, isn't he, Dizzy? Isn't he, Dizzy? I'm a poet, and I didn't know it. But the other questions I asked him because it was about Dizzy became the unofficial mascot for the Eight Bits. Well, the Spectrum and the Amstrad certainly. Um, for some reason, he wasn't that popular on the on the 64, and certainly not on the Amiga. Um, but for for the Amstrad and the Spectrum, he became their mascot that that, that, that never was. Yes, better than Roland, I'd say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Much much more successful than Roland. That was a little bit forced with Roland because those weren't actually Roland games. They were other games that they farmed in or farmed out. And then just slapped the Roland title on. Like earlier, Roland in the Caves. That's yeah. not Roland, that's Bugaboo the Flea. That's a typical Alan Sugar strategy, if you ask me. I think On the Ropes was. Yes, and on then... On the Ropes was, was coded with that look of Indiana Jones kind of thing. That was the Roland look. Oh, but hold on a minute. That game is called Fred on the C64 inspection. Yeah, that's true, it is. Oh, no. Alan Sugar, what have you done? Well, it worked. Roland the ropes, Roland the caves, it, it worked for a bit. Yes, Roland would be fantastic to stream right now, but unfortunately, ah, the gremlins won't let me. Roland, the way I've always pictured Roland is, is always the way he looks in on the ropes. That's the best way to look yeah. at it, yes. as, the, as the Indiana Jones adventurer. <laughs> hmm. So, any other interesting things that the Oliver twins said to you in the interview? Yes, um... The um, Fantastic Adventures of Dizzy, which came out on the NES, was originally planned to be, um, to, well, to use the Aladdin Deck Enhancer, which Nintendo had, had released. Um, but unfortunately, because it was an add-on to late in the system's life, it, it didn't take off and it flopped pretty quickly. So there's two versions of that Dizzy game. There's the gold edition which is the cart only and then 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 you have the platinum edition I think it's called which is the Aladdin deck enhanced edition which makes it look much more fluid and it's longer as well I think okay so that was back in the days when they used to call systems control decks am I correct there yeah. especially yeah. the NES yeah and it does sound a little bit like the game genie because the guy on the front of the game genie looks a little bit like Aladdin doesn't he yeah genie yeah that was the idea. It was, it was the idea to just basically pump the NES's um, graphics and sound up a bit. Uh, it, it didn't work though because it was just it was too expensive and no one bought into it. And by that time, the you know the 16 bits were on the way, weren't they? So uh, the death of the 8-bit system. A sad day and yet a happy day. Yeah, but this is in, this is interesting. Go dizzy go because it was originally um, designed to be a standalone NES release. But the Oliver Twins actually pulled out of that. The, the Codemasters wanted to release it as a, as a, as a standalone game. But the, Code uh, but the Oliver Twins said, we don't think it's got enough substance, like the adventure games, to make it as a standalone game or justify a cost. Mm. So that's why it ended up on the compilation. Um, the the Quattro something? Was it Quattro? No, no. This is off a collection. The, it's called the Excellent Dizzy Collection. On the, on oh, the, right. And it's three games. It's this, which is it's the only way you can play Go, Go Dizzy Go. It's the only platform it's on. You've also got um, Dizzy the Adventurer, which is a slightly recoded version of Dizzy Prince of the Oak Folk on that, which is the primary game. And you've also got a um, version of Dizzy Panic, which they call Panic Dizzy. <laughs> Why did they do that? I have no idea. Anyway, well, they just change the names around. It's the same game, in essence, or sort of. It's still the the, the puzzle rip-off game. Right. But yeah, then three games are on on the Master System, the excellent Dizzy Collection, and that is the last official Dizzy game. Uh, mm, there were tons of Dizzy games, though, weren't there? There was even that Pac-Man clone, fast food. Which is not to be confused with the Atari game of the same name, which I quite liked. Yeah, you had well, yeah, the, the, you call them the spin-offs. Um, you had you, you had fast food, you had quick snacks, um, dizzy down the rapids, which was like a, basically a clone of Tubin. 
Ah, we have reached the end of this video, so subscribe to Novabug, youtube.com slash Novabug, at Novabug on Twitter. And thank you for joining me for this brief commentary on your video. Thank you. <laughs> oh, related videos, let's see. Let's have a look at some comments on this video. Nice to me. Oh dear, not many. Let's add one right now. Let's thumb this up. No, let's thumb it down. No. <laughs> <laughs> Half Blind Gamer says the game looks like a load of fun. Is there co-op play when choosing when opting for the two-play mode? It seems like it could be, which would make for some fun times. I, sure. I believe there is. Yes, yes. You can another player can play as Daisy. Ah, okay. That would be interesting to play as a female character in the Dizzy universe for the first time, or not? I don't know. Um. Yeah, it is. It is. Um. Because you can select between whether you want to play against each other, together, or as Daisy against Zax, or Dizzy against Zax. So that's quite nice. Yes, and it's been very nice for you to join me here in this live stream this evening. Thank you very much. We're approaching midnight, so I am going to call a halt to this stream right here.